So every time we come to Mexico, there's this talk about the thin hair and the effect it's got on the race cars. So uh, Mexico City is sitting at 2,200 meters over the sea level, and this has got an effect on the pressure, uh, ambient pressure, and the density of the air. And why is that? So you can imagine that the pressure is generated by this big column of air that's stacked and goes up the atmosphere, and the gravity of, of the Earth is basically attracting all the way down. In Mexico, we are missing the bottom 2,200 meters of it, and uh, there is less pressure because the, this column is shorter. And the density is going hand in hand with pressure, so uh, it, it is less dense, and as we say, thinner, and this has got an effect on the race car. So what's the effect on performance? Well, first of all, the way to make a car going faster around the racetrack is by adding downforce. And this is uh, pushing the car down, it's uh, increasing the pressure and the force into the contact patch of the tires, and it's increasing the grip. The air density is, is a factor in this mechanism because the load the car is generating is linearly uh, going hand in hand with density. So when we come here, we, we have uh, less chances at, at the average track. Uh, hence, we tend to run quite a big wing. In fact, we're going to race this weekend with our maximum downforce level as anybody else down the big lift, to be honest. But there's also another effect in terms of drag. Also, drag is a function of air density. Around here, we see the highest speeds of the air around race track. For the same reason, uh, drag is quite low despite running a big wing. So, despite the car looking like a Monaco car, the actual forces are generated both vertically or longitudinally are the same order of magnitude than what we spilled in Monza. Other than aerodynamics, the low density is done affecting other systems on the car. For example, the power unit. The power you're producing with an engine or a power unit is a function of how much petrol, gasoline uh, you're able to burn inside the combustion engine. And this is related to how much air goes into the engine. So if you had a normally aspirated engine, we come to Mexico, we we'll lose uh, quite a big chunk of power in effectively somebody down the same ratio of the air density, so to 78% that we had on the sea level. And uh, now the power unit these days are turbocharged, and this means that we can actually uh, take the air uh, at ambient pressure and uh, we can compress it, so we can recover density. But this means that here in Mexico, the turbo has to work much, much harder than other places. So although we recover part of the power we lose coming up here, power loss is not as big as, for example, the aerodynamic loss. And then finally, the cooling. So there are a lot of systems in the car that need to be cooled, uh, starting from brakes uh, or the power unit itself. The same applies in, in the cooling. All the uh, heat exchange mechanism are governed by density. Up here, with the low density, it means that the air is less able to subtract heat from the radiators or from the brakes. Uh, so we need to run bigger scoops, uh, trying to maximize the cooling for the brakes, and the car, even in uh, the cool the power unit, needs to be more opened up, which means that you're running a different cooling configuration than other places. So the high altitude is bringing several challenges uh, in Mexico, but it's making it an event that's quite special. It's forcing us, the engineer and the driver, to be super diligent in monitoring brake temperatures, for example. But it's a challenge to be a relishing.